there is a mythology, I think, among mushroom takers that of the saucer, of the animate quality, that this thing is intelligent and that it desires a symbiotic relationship with man. And it's not hard to see why, because it's a real breakthrough for a species to cut a deal with human beings. Then you come in from the cold. You're no longer subject to uh, the vicissitudes of Darwinian selection. You've become a domesticated plant from now on, or animal. From now on, your fate is entirely linked to the fate of all the other domesticated plants and animals and their husbandmen, the human race. And so, for a plant to become, to go from a wild crop to being a food crop, virtually ensures its survival into the untold future. So it's a very, if you think of plants and animals as seeking better adaptive stances in the environment, you could hardly do better than to bring yourself to the attention of human beings and get them to cultivate you. That means when we go to space, they will go to space. When the human race leaves the planet, we will take thousands and thousands of plants and animals and bacteria and fungi and insects. All these things will go with us. We are the point species for this process of leaving the planet. But I'm sure from the planetary ecosystem's point of view, uh, we're just doing it for all the other little furry folk and their friends, you know. We're acting for everybody and everybody will, it will benefit everyone. I don't know if you've been following this new data that's come out, but it's now pretty clear that there is a 26 million year cycle of cometary infall on the surface of the earth and that uh, this is driving evolution in some sense and it's pretty terrible when it happens and it's happened more than once, more than twice, more than half a dozen times. It is somehow part of the dynamics of our solar system. It has to do with the presence of a star uh, 10 light days from our sun that is dark but that every once in a while perturbs the cloud of cometary material which lies outside the orbit of Pluto and causes this infall of cometary material and it's what destroyed the dinosaurs and it's what uh, created the tertiary transition and an extinction in the late Jurassic and many others and the, the way they know this is because they find very highly uh, quantized levels of uh, atomic iridium, isotopes of iridium that don't occur normally on this planet are found in very thin layers coincident with fossil records of extinctions. So I think if you believe in the overmind or, the, or Gaia or something like that, then you must believe that it senses the, on, the approach of these crises and uh, biology must grow very anxious uh, as one of these million year periods approaches in which we can expect you know two or three hundred large objects to come raining in on the earth and they are extremely effective at creating mass extinctions. We are right now at a low point in that cycle. It will be another 12 million years before it really gets going again. But even at the low points of the cycle, every once in a while something comes winging in. I don't know how many of you have ever seen Meteor Crater in Arizona, but that's only 50,000 years old. That was not a large object. That was an object a couple of hundred yards in diameter. Everything within 800 miles of the impact point died instantly. And the uh, shock wave that rolled out, they estimate, probably circled three times around the world. So it was, uh, you know, and that was peanuts compared to things that have gone on uh, in, if you look at larger spans of time. In fact, once I had a con, it was, in fact, before all this came up about cometary and fall and all this, I was stoned once in the forest in Hawaii having a conversation with the mushroom and it rolled around to what was the most outrageous thing that human beings had ever witnessed. So, you know, push this button and this movie 
begins of these people, dark-skinned people, bare-assed people, somehow they knew and they were climbing this pinnacle, uh, some kind of rock outcropping somewhere. I got the feeling it was like Thailand or around Chiang Mai, somewhere like that. And it was night. And they got up on top of this thing and looked to the southeast, and I was like one of them or something. And uh, I thought, I wasn't sure. I mean, I thought that the sky had caught on fire or that it had exploded. And, and meanwhile, the voice, the over voice is explaining that 700,000 years ago on the outer Banda Arc of Indonesia, this object came down and that we're seeing it from 3,000 miles distance because uh, closer than that, nobody lived to talk about it. And this is all true. This is known to have happened. This object came down. It's created these things called tektites, which are raindrop-shaped, tiny raindrop-shaped pieces of liquid glass that were thrown out and hundreds of miles into the air, they find these things from the Himalayas to Australia, from southern Japan to Mauritius, just the splatter, in other words, from where this thing came in. So uh, this is a, a pump, part of the force driving human, uh, human evolution and biological evolution generally on the planet. Catastrophism, the fact that the Earth is far less stable than we assume, and in fact, it's becoming more and more unstable. If you look at the fossil record, the last uh, 10 million years have been the most uh, perturbed and dynamic in the Earth's history. The coming and going of these glacial sheets w did not happen much before that. It is, uh, has to do with accumulated uh, <coughs> perturbations in the, in the Earth's rotation. If you look at the last million years, it is the most perturbed of the last 10 million. And if you look at the last 100,000 years, it is the most perturbed of all. So the planet is actually accumulating instability. This is not to say that it's about to fall to pieces or anything, but simply looked at on the scale of 100 million years, it is... Uh, it is destabilizing, and this has to do with things like geomagnetic reversals, the gradual despun effect of the moon, and things like that. The, and the days have been getting shorter, too, having to do with the transfer of gravitational and tidal energy to the moon. I think we're about to go, that, you know, when the comets come, they'll find that man is just a fading memory in the fossil record of Earth, and that we are long gone that I, I, uh, the major threat to our going to space is probably uh, the arms race. It also, strangely enough, is the major force forcing us into space. It's a strange thing. The closer we get to the goal, the more dangerous the situation becomes. It's almost like moving against a force field the prediction of these comets is very tricky. Apparently, a couple of years ago at NASA, they held a public conference on what are called Earth crossers, Earth uh, asteroids which cross the orbit of the Earth. And all these people, astronomers, various people, got together. It was a five-day conference and started giving their papers. And on the second day, they classified everything and kicked the press out and said, you know, enough of this. Because what the data was showing was these things are out there. They're very real. I mean, th there may be as likely as a massive Soviet attack over the pole may be an, an impact by an object from space. And certain trajectories of approach would be very, very devastating. In other words, if one comes up be from behind and impacts the Earth at a low velocity, we can probably sustain that. But one which is coming the other way around the sun and is lost in the heliacal light of the sun will not only have the, uh, imp the increased velocity imparted to it by having been gravitationally whipped around the sun, it will also be lost in the solar glare, and we would have, you know, minutes of warning at the highest level. I mean, you and I would never know what hit us.
but the the people at the top would have three or four minutes of realizing something was going to happen and uh, so there have been proposals for deep space radar networks and actually strategies for undoing this there's a rumor that you remember reagan was very big on dense pack which was a way of putting hundreds of missiles together. And, and then that was slowly dropped. And the rumor that went around at a certain level in the scientific community was the reason dense pack was dropped was because the CIA did feasibility studies that showed it would be very easy for the Russians on a time scale of 15 years to deflect an asteroid and take it out non-nuclear. You know, to wipe out the entire American deterrent capability with a non-nuclear impact of an asteroid uh, right on the center of the field. So then they decided that was not the way to go. But uh, these things are out there. Leave it to the military. <laughs>